Hi everyone, welcome back to Shane Hunts. Thanks again for coming back and checking out these videos. Again, we say it every single video, but it's been incredible the, the level of support that we've received so far. I think we're just over 100 subscribers now in just under two months, which is something incredible that I couldn't have asked for. And so it's cool to see that people are kind of enjoying the videos or people are at least watching the videos. If you haven't checked them out, we have quite a few that have kind of been posted already. Go like, subscribe, check them out if you're interested. And if not, I hope that you gather something from this video. And today we got something a little bit Bit different here in store for you. The reason that I'm doing this is number one to celebrate the fact that we just got up to 100 subscribers very exciting. Number two uh, the fact that we are just coming up on the whitetail deer red. Number three I started seeing a lot of posts over the over the course of the last couple weeks months of people posting on social media platforms where people are saying I don't know what I'm doing. I need some help. Give me some tips. I know that hunting can be extremely overwhelming. I've grown up deer hunting. I started when I was just a little kid and I've kind of gone through, you know, I've, I've lived and breathed whitetail deer hunting for the last, for my entire life. My goal is to take out one little element of that hunting aspect and make it a little bit easier for people that are just getting into this. To throw some stats at you, I pulled up something on My Wild Alberta uh, a couple weeks ago, and if you look at the stats right here, you saw that there was an increase of like 30,000 licenses sold in Alberta. So very awesome, super cool to see uh, people that are willing to try it out for their first time. And like I said, I hope that this video will be a little bit helpful to you guys. So without any further ado, here are your top 10 tips to tag your first white-tailed deer. Okay, so starting from a super macro level, and we're gonna work our way down to something a little bit more specific when it comes to actually interacting with a deer at the end. Number 10, research your target area. If you go to an area and you have all the best gear in the world, you've watched, you know you have every single piece of whitetail knowledge in your head, but you go to an area where there's no deer, you're not gonna shoot a deer. There's different ways to do this. I think that um, a lot of folks will go and check out online platforms. I know specifically in Alberta, I think it's called Alberta Outdoorsman. If you go on there, uh, people will post about different while WMUs that they've had success in or other other zones that they haven't had a lot of success in, if you can at least get a generalized idea of where you can go, you can work with that. Not only that, I, uh, an app that has really helped me throughout my time uh, as a hunter is is an app that's called iHunter Alberta. It'll tell you who owns that piece of property. It can give you the land contact owner or the landowner's contact information. And it also gives you a topographical idea of what any area looks like. You can also click on there and it shows you your regulations in case you forget or your book is lost. Um, you can you know, check the sunset tables. Everything that you need is in the iHunter app and you don't need service to use it. So quick plug for iHunter. I think that that's something that you should check out and you should consider. I think it's like $15 per year, but in my own uh, experience, it has paid for itself a million times over. Of course, there's always Google Maps. You go on there, they have all of the satellite imagery of different ravines or creeks or um, areas that may have been, uh, you know, the forestation that's occurring in every different place. Or I think that Google Maps is also worth checking out. Also, um, an overlooked point that uh, a lot of people get tied up in the tech aspect in, in searching Google Maps and going on to these forums that they forget that there are people that live in a lot of these different towns uh, that will be able to provide gold mine levels of advice to you. So if you get an opportunity to speak with a local in regards to deer hunting, I think that that's worth your time to do so. Even if, like I said, if, if it's to get a general area that they've heard about in the past, that, that could be good to start with. So start with that and see where you get. Number nine, once you've found your target area, you want to look for signs of deer presence. Um, you want to look for signs that would indicate that a deer has been there recently, that a deer is using it often, um, and that, yeah, there's a chance that you're going to see a deer when you actually get onto this piece of property. Game trails are your friend. Deer tracks are your friend. Whitetail rubs are your friend. Whitetail scrapes are your friend. All of these things are things that you do want to be looking for. The trail cameras can be super beneficial, but they're not required. I feel like there's a catch-22 with trail cameras where um, if you don't automatically get photos of a million different deer and a huge buck on there, then it's not a good spot. Or if you get a photo of a huge buck uh, once, that you automatically assume that all of your time should be spent in this spot. So trail cameras are a catch-22. 
to each their own, whatever it is that you want to do, that's cool, but they can be a tactical tool to use uh, to kind of get an idea about how often deer might be moving through, what direction they're heading, uh, and etc. Tip number eight, don't become attached to a certain location. I've seen this time and time again where you have, and again, I talk about the catch-22 of trail cameras where you become attached to a certain area because you get this photo of this huge buck. Uh, it's unlike anything you've ever seen before, but you only get one photo of him and you've only seen him once at, at, at 2 a.m. or something like that. And then your brain, my brain has done it too. You're like, I need to spend every single uh, waking day, waking hour of every single day in that stand until that deer walks out. You waste a lot of time in a lot of seasons that way if you really if, if if you're not getting consistent evidence that this deer is traveling through the area maybe you can find a location close to there that might be more beneficial and more productive than that one don't become attached to a certain location tip number seven dusk and dawn will generally be your best chances of success this is something that generally I think that a lot of people know but it's worth noting regardless a lot of your best hunts are going to occur uh, within a two hour span of either the sun rising or the sun setting. Number six, be mindful of wind direction. You always want, generally speaking, you want the wind blowing in your face or blowing as close to your, like in your face as possible. If you think about the logic of it, if the wind is blowing by you into the field or this way or that way, and the deer is where you're out here somewhere, they're gonna pick up that scent and sometimes they might be gone before you even see them. It's worth it, pick up a, this is one that I use, it's 25 bucks, it's called Scent Away, it's any kind of scent killer will do, generally speaking, uh, it's, but it's worth looking into. Just give yourself a quick little spray down, you don't need to soak yourself or anything, but just focus on areas that may be more, uh, uh, apt to, to, to sweating like armpits or you know hair or whatever uh, check it out it's only 25 bucks unfortunately eventually there will be a time that you'll be left scratching your head like what the heck happened this deer caught me and I don't know how things to look for when a deer is starting to spook or maybe starting to become a little bit nervous and knowing that you might be there but not quite being able to put their hoof or finger or hoof on it this is a th Generally what they'll do is they're gonna start to take their front hoofs and they'll start to bang at the ground. It's like they'll, they'll, it, they'll st start stomping, start stomping on the ground and they'll make this super weird sound. So take a listen to this. So if you didn't know what that was and you've been in the woods and you've heard that, it's a super creepy sound unless you know what it is and then it's just a terrifying sound because you know the context of what might be happening. Um, so listen for that sound if you do see a deer or even if you don't see a deer, sometimes you'll hear that before you even see them. Pay attention to that, that might mean that they might have heard or smelled or something and they might be onto you. And then of course the very last uh, sign that you never want to see when you're hunting whitetail is the telltale flap of the white tail when it is running away from you. Deer can cover so much distance for the, the, the size of the creature that they are. They can cover ground so, so quickly. If a deer takes off on you, chances are you're not going to be successful in locating him again. That's not to say every time, but just for the sake of a generalization, if he's gone and you watched him run away, it's probably over. Number five, move slowly move carefully and move with intention. My dad always used to tell me that with every step that you take, the entire woods changes. You can step around a tree, you'll see a tiny little a shooting lane or whatever that you might not have seen before and then you take another step and it'll be gone again. So you want to make sure that you're moving very slowly. It's really difficult to pick up on movement when you yourself are moving very quickly and so but if you're moving very quickly it's easier for other animals to pick up on you sometimes those animals will see you before you even get an opportunity to see them scan everything keep a mental note of things that you've seen that might look out of place number four this is another tip that i learned from my dad in growing up uh at whitetail hunting don't search for a whole deer, look for shapes. My dad always said the woods are vertical, 
deer are horizontal. Trees always go like this. They're straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. But a deer's torso doesn't necessarily fit into that kind of consistency of the forest. You want to look for shapes that don't belong, and a shape that doesn't belong is something that is perfectly horizontal in the woods full of verticals. So you're wanting to look for a deer's torso, which is horizontal. If you're looking for on the bottom, you can look for the little white patch on their belly or even on the top of their back if there's snow or even sometimes the way that the sun shines on their back looks a little bit different than how it would shine on a tree that might be a windfall. And so look for those horizontal shapes. You want to look for antlers. Uh, obviously, some antlers don't grow necessarily the way that a branch would, although you will be mistaken one time you'll see a, a branch that you're super confident as a deer that it's not. But antlers grow up or out and then up and then the way that they kind of look doesn't necessarily isn't super consistent with the layout of the woods pay attention to that number three pay attention to animal behavior ask yourself why is an animal doing what it's doing there is a way to create a picture of something that might be happening without being able to actually see something. So I'm gonna give three different examples of three different animals that might be able to paint a picture of something that might be transpiring that you might not even know about. Number one, we're gonna talk about squirrels, we're gonna talk about deer, and we're gonna talk about crows. Squirrels. Squirrels, if you've ever gone on a hike and you've walked by a squirrel and you've startled them, squirrels will do this like really chattery chattery thing and like when they get scared they'll do this like super chattery thing and it'll finish with chirps listen to it here and you can see at the end there, there there's like that little chirp that happens and that like sometimes you'll get that initial chatter that will happen where, where squirrels will, will just communicate with one another uh, towards like darkness sometimes you'll hear that but when those chirps start to happen that is a note that's a notification that maybe that squirrel was startled why was that squirrel startled maybe there was something that was moving by that squirrel i always focus my attention on if I hear that sound, especially with the chirp at the end, I'm looking in that direction and I'm scanning and scanning and scanning and looking for movement because those squirrels are the snitches of the whitetail woods and they've given out, they've given away more whitetails than, than you could even count to. Number two, I want to talk about deer. And this is more relevant to if you're hunting bucks and if you're looking for a, a specific male deer as opposed to a deer, a deer in general. If a deer comes barreling out of the woods, running out of the woods with no real, like towards you or it, like it's not that she's scared, it's that she's just running from something, you're always immediately, you should be focusing on her back trail and the trail that she came out of, especially during the rut. I am always, if I see that happening, I'm always spending at least 15 to 20 minutes sitting plunked down, waiting for whatever it is that's coming out from behind her. Those will also continue to look behind them. They'll look behind them and they'll look behind them and it's because there is something there. So if you see a deer that's not necessarily just mouth to the ground feeding and she's looking back in the woods, you wanna be conscious of something that might be coming out of the woods here soon. Get ready, get in a position to shoot because you don't wanna be in a position where a big buck is coming out and you're just kind of all over the place. And then lastly, although it is kind of different, I wanna to talk to you guys about, about crows. So crows, are if you've ever seen roadkill on the side of the highway, generally there will be a congregation of crows that will be sitting in a tree relatively close to that roadkill because they're flying back and forth feeding. If you see this in your hunting area, you might assume that maybe something is dead in the area which might bring in a lot of predators which might expulse the deer from that area. If you see a lot of that, maybe just leave your hunting area for a couple of days Locate one of the different places that you have, like I had talked about earlier, don't, don't get fixated on one certain uh, area. Get out of there and go try out a different area and come back in a couple days once everything's been cleaned out and once deer feel comfortable coming back in. Number two, trust your gut. If something tells you, listen, don't move, stay right here, take a step, take a step to the side, sit down here. If something tells you, an internal voice tells you that you should be doing something, listen to it. I can't explain it. I'm not going to try and get, explain it. You'll know it when I mean it. Listen to that voice in your head. 
And lastly, the biggest and best tip that I can give to you guys that is going to help give you success with your white-tailed deer hunting. Sounds super cliche, but hammer this home. Number one, don't give up. Eventually, you will become tired. Deer hunting is a grind and it's exhausting and there are gonna be days that you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be like, oh man, I wish I could just sleep in today. When you do finally tag a deer, you'll have an opportunity to sleep in. So just keep that in the back of your mind as something to look forward to while you're going through the, the huge grind of what deer season could look like. Again, I just wanted to thank everyone that's watched this video. If you feel so inclined, by all means, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Share with us your stories of your successes or whatever that you've had over the course of this fall or whenever. Uh, and again, I hope that these tips will work for you uh, and I wish you nothing but the best in your whitetail deer hunting endeavor this season. My hope is that you'll get a nice big buck and uh, you'll be back here to talk about it. So thanks again for watching Shane Hunts. We'll see you guys later uh, and happy hunting.